Right. He's back. Hey, what's up, Jason? We met him Isaacs. in New York. <laughs> we met him in New York uh, a few years ago. I think he was promoting Dig, right? The Dig spot? Oh, I, I think so. I remember. My God, I yeah. can't remember this morning. Yeah. I haven't had any <laughs> caffeine yet. <laughs> but uh, we welcome him back right now, Jason Isaacs on hey. the Cavino hey. and Rich there Show. Oh, there's nothing I love more than a mild ripple of one applause. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> thanks very much. Too. There we go. Usually yes. our producer ass claps, but he's a little tired from our Vegas trip. Yeah. Uh, and he's a big fan. He's a big Harry Potter guy. Uh, yeah. Jason, my the, first question. You've the, done so much. Where's the crazy, crazy fan? Why am I still working? <laughs> why no. Still, yeah. Why are people why giving are you me here jobs? With us? I don't know. When, when you've done so many things, why are you on our stupid show? <laughs> no, you have crazy fans, whether it be from Star Trek or Harry Potter. Yeah. Which are the craziest for you? Uh, well, so I've just been introduced to the Star Trek universe. Right. The, the Potter fans have known for a long time, and they mostly loved or fell in love with the book when they were kids. The Star Trek fans are adults, and I understand there are all kinds of adult-themed Star Trek celebrations that I hope I'm not invited to, right. but I, I'd like to see the photographs off. So uh, they are, they've they been fans for like 50 years, many mm -hmm. of them, so it's d deeply ingrained. I barely know them, but I'm looking forward. In fact, I'm going to Vegas myself for the Star Trek thing this summer, which I'm looking forward to. And Jonathan Frakes, who was Riker, is my guide and mentor through the uh, insanity of the Star Trek fandom. And he says, you're going to love it. Brace yourself. Wow. Yes, yeah, awesome. it's going to be a whole different fan base I'm going for on the you. Star Trek cruise. This time next year, if I'm not working, and uh, again, that's another thing. I thought I would, I'd rather pluck my own eyes out with a blunt cake fork. And there and you are. <laughs> and Jonathan goes, "No, no, no, you'll love it. It's awesome. You've got to come." You uh, can be treated, but you know why? Because you'll be, you like this. You'll be the star of the ship. <laughs> yeah, a, you'll the be ship the, that you can't get off. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this: Sometimes we get really cool treatment, right? And and those moments are few and far between. Right. <laughs> but we actually got some good treatment in Vegas, and, yeah. and it's nice. Does getting treated that way ever get old? You know, like you're on a boat, right? Everybody loves you. So here's, Does here's that, is that annoying wife, after a while? At one point, my wife, I said, come down to the set, darling, for something a couple of years ago. And she said, I don't want to come to the set. You don't see it. It's like the court of Louis the Fourteenth. Everybody kisses your ass. They love your jokes. They get you tea. And, you know, they all treat you like you're something special. And you don't, you don't even see it. And I went, oh, no, I see it. I really like it. So, <laughs> okay, I'm glad yeah. you admit no, that. The truth is I've got a wife and kids who are monumentally unimpressed by me. And, and all of my friends think I'm a total dick. So there's no chance of me ever believing any of it, which means that you enjoy it. When right. I so they must all, especially your friends, must roll their eyes when they see people totally treating you uh, like, like, like a, you well, know, a big time celebrity. Well, here's the weird thing about my level of uh, infamy, whatever it is, is that I pass by completely unnoticed all the time. I get the tube in England, I get the subway, I get the bus, I walk through the streets. When I go to an event where it's billed that I'm going to be there, people suddenly start shouting and screaming and wanting autographs. Uh, but And then it's over and then I just stroll past them and they bump into me and spit on me like anybody else. That seems like a perfect <laughs> level of fame, though. It's right. all right. It works pretty well. Because yeah, yeah. You, you do well. You're in quite, you know, you, your resume I and IMDb speaks yeah. for itself. Itself. You probably live a, a lovely life, but you don't. But you're not. You're not, har you're not harassed every day. Though. I still feel sorry for myself and think the world owes me a lot more than I'm getting right. every day. But no, I live an all right life. But it's the 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 work level's just right. I know a couple of very famous people, and their lives are really shitty. I know they have money, which is not nothing in the world. Right. But uh, apart from that, they can't walk out the front door. Plus, if they're having a terrible day or they're arguing with someone or they're just you know they. Picking their nose, they look up and there's 43 people taking YouTube footage of it. Yeah, being under the yeah. microscope all the time has to suck too. So yeah, I, I would I would sign up for what Jason Isaac Scott. Yeah. No big movies. I think, I think, work got, some I big think, stars. I think it's sort of perfect. To be yes, honest. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of flow. By the, way, the, the new movie, the oh, Death yeah. of Stalin. Yes, that that looks fantastic. I'm embarrassed to say because you know the thing is you go around and you promote things. I've you've met me before. And yeah. I'm saying, uh, so you lose your credibility, but it's fucking brilliant. Yeah, it's that it really good? is fantastic. Here, here's the thing about it: it you, you know, Rotten Tomatoes is like ninety eight percent or something. But every screening at every cinema gets a spontaneous round of applause from the audience, which is pretty rare. Wow! And, uh, and yeah, it's killing them. I mean, the de it's got the word death and the word Stalin, and it we wouldn't instantly lead you to know that it's a hilarious comedy. But it's a, it's a comedy from the man who wrote and created Veep. And for British people, uh, or people who like British comedy, he's the guy who helped create Alan Partridge and The Thick of It and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, satirical and, comedy with a lot of, with a lot of stars, too. Like a really stars, cool cast. The real star is the story in the script. I mean, yeah, it's, it's packed wall to wall with comedy geniuses, but it's just people are falling out of their seats laughing and gasping. It's not just slapstick. It's the, it's the comedy of horror and terror. Plus, obviously, it goes without saying, but it has some monstrous uh, contemporary parallels in it that, uh, that chill you to the bone. 
Nice. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've done a lot of you know comedy stuff, but you're not necessarily known for comedy stuff. So is that refreshing well, some for you? I think that everything I've done is hilarious. Really? But... <laughs> yeah, no, but think about <laughs> but, it. Like, no, you, you, comedy, a lot of times no. you play like the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, for and, and I was going to ask you why is that? Is it, is it the look? Or is it something I, you're good I, at? I obviously have a face that is deeply unpleasant. And sometimes my wife will go, I go, oh sweetie, will you pass the salt? And she'll go, that is so fucking mean. And I go, what? She go, why would you? And so uh, clearly, there's just something about my face in default and my voice. Uh, maybe you're facing which on the screen. Just, well, maybe well, on the screen, though. Sadistic. No, because it, well, in person, I don't think that. Think about it. Some very, from some very nice women have what they call resting bitch face. Like they look, <laughs> they look bitchy when they, when they're really pleasant. Right. You, you're a, you're a gentleman, but maybe so he's got resting maybe you're rest, maybe you're resting faces that like I'm just this guy. Where where are these people who who can coin the phrase resting bitch face? Who are the people you mix with who use that oh, kind know, of it's, language? It's, yeah, but it's, it's just, you know some women are very nice, but they when they're when they're not making an expression, they're but also there's only two parts, two great parts in most. Good stories. There's the hero, yep. right? Uh, and that part's gone already. Uh, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt are busy, uh, and then there's the dick. So you know, if you're not the hero, you're the dick, well, or, you, or you, else you're wallpaper. If you want to, right? if, if, I'll give you a, a huge pat on the back because I think your role in the Patriot, uh, what, Colonel Tavington, mm -hmm. was that Colonel you Tavington. were? This is. I think I've seen a list online that said you're the biggest dick of all time. I think that's Ron Jeremy, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> we're close. If yeah. you guys remember the scene, Spot, just play a second of it. This is fantastic. Wait, we're on camera, are we? What's yeah, going on? This is fantastic. Are you, the... you got a spot oh, on. That was a very short clip. I remember you from that farm, that stupid little boy. Oh, stupid little boy. He delivered That's that perfectly. Uh, yeah, Heath oh. Ledger. I haven't seen it Mel Gibson. Did he die? Hmm? Oh. Oh, watch out. Here's Mel. You know, it's an ugly business doing one's duty. But just occasionally, it's a real pleasure. Before this war's over, I'm going to kill you. Why wait? Oh, there's a oh. pithy showbiz anecdote about that moment. I okay. love it. Here's so two spot, things. Spot, pause it. Was that it weird? Did, did, uh, you, you're really like face to face with Mel Gibson. Did, so did, was, I, did he have bad breath or something? Or no? No, I oh, think God. he's going to fucking kill me. That moment. So a few things out of that moment. One is, <coughs> stupid boy, stupid came about boy. because right at the beginning, when I, when I ride up and I kill everybody, uh, Mel's children and stuff. Uh, they kept the camera rolling, and I was standing on this, not on a horse, because horses move around and shit all the time. So I'm on a step ladder, <laughs> and there's a couple of grips rocking me around on the step ladder, and the dredger just kept the camera rolling. And I was thinking, oh, has, he, has he lost it? Did somebody say, can't. I've got nothing to do. I've run out of lines. I've run out of gunshots. And the, the camera's still rolling. So I thought, I'd better say something. And I went, stupid boy. And he went, cut. And I went, why'd you keep it rolling? And he went, for things like that. <laughs> so a stupid boy came back. <laughs> but by the way, that's, moment, that's the line. Right. That yeah, was the line, yeah. Oh, exactly. So in this moment here, two things I remember about that. One is, I'm taller than Mel. And he's wearing that rather ludicrous hat. Yeah. And I went over to roll The Captain and went, Crunch hat. Yeah. <laughs> I said, listen, when he stands next to me, I'm a lot taller than him, and he's tilting his head back, and the hat's pointing upwards. And I'm really, and Roland went, Yeah, we should do something. You can maybe bend your knees or something. I said, Yeah, sure. So I start trying to bend my knees a bit in the scene, and we do a take, and then we go, I go back and I go, What does it look like? He goes, No, nah, I'm really noticing. He's like, You're a lot taller than him. <laughs> so then I start trying to scrape out a little ditch with my foot. <laughs> right? and, I, and Mel goes, Hey, what are you doing? I said, Nothing. He goes, I know what you're doing. You're trying to make yourself look smaller, right? Because I'm smaller than you. I said, Well, maybe it's just because we're standing on a slope. He went, Fuck off. You're the bad guy. You should be taller than me, oh. which is why he's a very smart storyteller. Got it, right? And then the second thing I remember about that is, in the script it said, he's, you know, he says, "Before the war is over, I'm going to kill you," and it says in the script, "I step back." And for the first time, he see me scared. And I went to roll on the director. I went, "Nah," <laughs> he said, "I can't. I can't be scared." He said, "Well, what do you want to do?" I said, "I don't know. Something else. Not be scared. There's madness. It's halfway through the film." He said, "Sure." So I would simply do something else. I said, "Should I tell Mel?" He said, "No, no, no. Just you know, do it. Surprise him." So he didn't know I was going to say, he comes up and goes, for the war is over, I'm going to kill you. And I said, why wait? And I took my sword out and I turned it around and offered him the handle, which you can't quite see there, so it looks a bit like I'm jerking him off out of the camera. Right, but, anyway, but, you, but it's implied. But <laughs> well, I'm actually turning my sword out. Right. And Mel looked at me and I thought he was going to fucking kill me because his eyes were kind of electric. And then they said, cut. 
And I went up and I said, I'm really sorry but to spring that on you. But Roland said, he went, I loved it. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what, what happens great movie. after that. What right. a great movie. I wanted you guys share a laugh because you're so serious in that moment. You know, and, and that's It's the why... Revolutionary War. We're slaughtering prisoners. Right. It's not a time for a slapstick I, yeah, yeah, I know. And Whereas so well. the death of Stalin. No, right. That's, 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 that's nice the comedy. Segue. Thanks very much. That's the comedy. That is that's comedy. What... Although the truth is that everybody in the death of Stalin is desperately serious because they're either trying to... You know, stage a coup, or or they know they're going to be killed because Stalin killed everybody around him all the time. So they know if they're not in charge, whoever takes over is going to kill them all. My character is the only one because I'm in charge of the Red Army, who they need if they're going to stage a coup. So I'm the only one who doesn't give a fuck, and I'm I was having the time of my life on on screen, metaphorically and literally, grabbing all the actors by the balls. <laughs> That's awesome, Jason Isaacs. Jason, um, uh, the death of Stalin is the new movie, guys. I, I saw you know when we're, we're watching this movie, Jeffrey Tambor, who's fantastic. Jeez. Buscemi. Buscemi. He's in the movie who he you know it's so funny because Steve Buscemi is one of those guys where he does such he does serious work and then he's in Adam Sandler comedies like yeah. this guy's pretty versatile he huh? couldn't do anything but I mean there's Michael Palin in it so for me I was just fanboying all day every day what a what a so fun you got, cast you got the Monty Python legacy you got everything that Steve's done everything Jeffrey's done because I'm a mad fan of Larry Sanders and the rest of development uh, the and Rupert then, friend guy he, he's uh, for for if you don't if you don't know the handsome guy funny. the handsome guy from yeah. Homeland yeah who knew right. he was funny right. he's yeah. hilarious. But then the other people that you don't know on the screen are gigantic TV comedians. So the toughest thing about this film for me was I couldn't work out who to sit next to at lunch and just start dribbling over. Right. Were, it was an unbelievably fun shoot. But the guy, really the star of the show is not on the screen. Amanda Iannucci's for about 30 years been the top of the comedy tree in Britain and the rest of the world is slowly catching up. And, uh, we were the critics are liking it. We yeah. were talking about this recently saying how the writing for these things are so underrated because the, the talent's there, but with the right... Writing and script, these things come to life. Well, what we've done, a, I did a ton of Q and A's here and in New York, and of course, the because of the way it's shot and played, the audience assume that t tons of it is improvised, and it's really not because he's it's all tightly scripted. He's got these two guys stand either side of him, the yellow legal pad, and he'll say something like, "We need something about animal sex and girl guides," and they'll walk <laughs> off and they'll come up with a hundred of the most stomach-churning, vomit-inducing, hilarious, obscene insults. They'll come out and they'll go and they'll read them one by one and go, "No, no, no, yes." And uh, so none of us came up with anything because uh, their stuff is just so much better. That's All right. Uh, again, uh, The Death of Stalin. Obviously, big movies. Harry Potter, The Patriot, movie star, TV star, uh, series, The Dig, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. Spot loved that. That was What was that, USA Network? Or? That was that was USA. USA. Yeah. And then he did the Netflix series, The uh, Oh Wait. Yeah, wait I'm, I'm here shooting the second season. Which, by the way, I love that. Do, yeah, do you we, know the, move, the five moves? Do you know the five moves? Uh, Mo I do. The five movements. Five five yeah, movements. I do. Yeah. do you, There's a brilliant yeah. thing online of people doing it in front of Trump Tower. A flash mob doing all the movements, and they do them fantastically in terms of Trump Tower. Yeah. What, yeah. What's the biggest difference when you've done all these different things? Did you enjoy the Netflix series? You know, the, the feedback yeah. you got from that. Like, how was it all different in your mind? It's you know the whole everything's different. The Star Trek people are different from the OA, and they're different from Harry Potter. And also, there's the military wing. So I've done a bunch of war. Films. Right. So you get people walking up, and you think. Oh, they're going to arrest me, shoot me, rob me, and you go, "Oh no, they were a ranger or a Delta Force guy, and they want to talk about Green Zone or Black Hawk Down." Or so even making these and things is all sort of a different. Do you know I do this thing feel? for a living? I I, I yeah. play dress up. So, right. Uh, none of them are better or worse than the others. Sometimes you get paid more. Sometimes you get paid less. Sometimes you're in a really horrible, shitty, rainy, dusty, you know, asbestos-filled basement, and sometimes you're in some glamorous location. But the truth is, I get to pretend to be other people. It must yeah. be it must be crazy that the response is different. Like this is a this is a movie that people you know you want to go push everyone to see it. People want right. to talk about this. This is this so everyone always wanted to stay for the Q and A. That and one of the things that blows people's mind when they watch this. I'm gesturing at something that's that not isn't there. there. But anyway, one of the things that blows people's mind is this is full of insane surreal episodes, and they're all true. He didn't make anything up. He rearranged it and made it, you know, uh, comedic. But the things that happen around crazy strongmen with a kind of cult of personality where everyone loses their, their compass and loses their shit, frankly, and, you know, d dissolves into the abyss is what we're seeing now in the White House. Right. And, mm -hmm. and uh, what we saw to a greater extent with Stalin. So what, what audiences love finding out with this one is what really happened. I, I I think it's fascinating. Now, uh, Spot, our producer, bearded guy, that he he's you know big. The guy sitting in speedos. Yeah, yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, that guy. Okay, yeah, <laughs> big Harry Potter guy, and we we're talking about how great you were in that. He was a big fan of your your role as Lucius, and he was saying, and he, he reminded me, Alan Rickman's also in that. We lost Alan yeah. Rickman. We lost many of the Harry Potter people. Actually, yeah, by, by now, I mean, and it was, you know, Alan Rickman to me, I, I was always amazed because that guy was a uh, you know diehard. Love actually, he, he was all over the place as far as his skill Rob, level. Don't, don't forget Sheriff of Nottingham. 
Yes. And, and you never will have seen him on stage. He did Les Liaisons d'Angerouge on Broadway, which turned into Dangerous Liaisons with the, the Malkovich part. He was a staggering stage actor as well. Was, was he one of the most underrated? Because look, now, I mean, we who lost under, him. Who underrated him? But he I, was but a gigantic I want, but, movie but I, but I feel like he should, be, he should be up there when people talk about the best, right? Oh, everybody's the best. The, the, uh, uh, the embarrassing truth is that actors are as good as the script and the story. So I know some amazing actors who never get to do anything that great because they just don't get great parts. When you get so Death of Stalin, I, I, get, I have a fantastic upstaging part. So lots of reviews mention nice things about me. But it's people with amazing actors. I've got some cracking killer laugh lines uh, and I know that in over the last 30 years when I've been nominated for an award or, or had a lot of fuss made I've always known the day I took the script out of the envelope if I don't fuck this up people are going to think the credit is due to me Alan was a brilliant actor but he also played some brilliant parts or maybe he chose you know some some great parts at your stage of the career do the parts come to you or are you very active the shitty on trying ones do, yeah. yeah the shitty ones come no no the good ones come sometimes but you know the ones you really want are the ones that people don't immediately think of you for so, so immediately you're trying for those i guess yeah, right because immediately people think of me uh, as something i've done previously right so they mm -hmm. ask that i get offered a lot to sort of repeat myself right the Got bad you. guy you you brought up uh, donald trump a, a few seconds ago we were going to talk about the 60 minute thing last night. I missed it, but any any thoughts on the whole uh, Stormy Daniels porn star coming out with telling I'm, her I'm story? I'm slightly confused. I have a legal background, but I can't make my way through it because I understand she's under a non disclosure right. agreement. So she's going around talking about all the time she fucked Trump and what happened, uh, and the f fact that it's a shame she's not allowed to talk about it. Yeah. Which is, I, I'm my head is slightly. <laughs> but I think she's talking about it, right? But she's but talking she gave, now. She gave, of course uh, she's talking about it. She's telling us the whole story. She gave an interview, she, which she, is the she, full yeah, story. Yeah, we were is, we were coming back from Vegas last night, so but it was on last night. And she gave like details of every interaction, which yeah. I'm guessing maybe 60 minutes or someone they said, "Hey, listen, if if if, this, if he sues you and it works out, we'll pay that." It's I can't imagine be. he hasn't. He's the only thing he's not tweeted about is her. But but the odd thing is that the notion that it would damage him in any way. Oh, he, he, he could did. Tweet, he tweeted one thing. Oh, did he? He, he didn't tweet about it directly, but he, hey, hold on, it said well, uh, no. What he did, he he sort of did this morning. He followed CNN on Twitter and then immediately unfollowed them just so that people. Right. Saw the action, which is which is Hilarious. pretty funny. And when he, you think and he's of it that starting way. fights with Biden too. I think just as a distraction from the other nonsense. It's no, but hold on, right. he's like a cornered he's animal, deflecting the, the, that the that story with some. But the trash irony talk. is, is it not that the ex head of the FBI with a hundred of the greatest lawyers bring you know uh, investigating this multi billion dollar possible tax fraud and everything else, he might be brought down by a stripper that he shanked. I, that <laughs> that is insane. To, to respect, he wrote a uh, so much fake news, never have been more. Inaccurate, but through it all, the country's doing great. So he just, he he addressed it by just saying more fake news so than here's, ever. So here's one of the odd things. One of the first things Trump did in office, he talked about the press as enemies of the people. That's a phrase he used, enemies of the people. And the last time that's been heard in public discourse was Joseph Stalin. And when Khrushchev came in power, he banned the phrase enemies of the people because Stalin used it so much and to discredit anybody who said anything against him. And, and Trump, for all the monstrous things he's doing, left, right, and center, the, the, one of them long-lasting damage he's wreaking on the American public is that no one believes in a fact anymore. No one believes in right. old-fashioned proper journalism. Yeah. You know, there are truths out there. And when I get attacked by crazy white supremacists, which I do all the time online, thank God, not in the flesh, but, but when I click on their feeds, I see where they're getting their information from. And they don't read any normal news sources. They don't read any proper journalism. They only read crazy, rabid lunatics. And so no wonder they believe that stuff. Yeah, it's 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 hard to decipher what's what's true or false. So, no, it's not. No, it isn't. It no, isn't. You got you got you got to you know. you source check things. But th there are legitimate sources that he has tried to discredit. When by the saying, Washington Post and New York Times, they have they really, have they, they, they have legitimate, they, you they're you know, legitimate they triple sources. check things and and they take journalism seriously. Breitbart is not a news source. Fox News is one of the most oxymoronic titles I've ever seen in my life. It should be called Fox Bullshit. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I find interesting? I, I love that these things, certain things do get to you, and you'll actually click on the person to see where they got their news. Well, because uh, first of all, I want to see if they're a bot. If their name is John zero five nine three four seven eight nine two, I think that's probably not a person. But when I think this is a normal person, and how could they possibly think this? Rich, Rich I click and that. I go, geez, they just get nothing but shit pumped in their ears and eyes yeah. all the time. Rich is always amazed. Like when he he'll click on a person because you know everybody gets shit. That's just the culture we live in. Yeah. He'll click on somebody and realize that you know he, he's hiding behind no no icon, no avatar. No profile yeah, yeah, yeah. picture. Yeah. yeah, who really cares? This guy's yeah, a loser. But then I'll look but at then, someone. But then I'll look. But then I'll look. A guy with a family and a dog. And, and that's right. more upsetting to me. The, 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 right. the, 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 I agree. When they're veterans and they're you know people who have enormous respect for their service, when they think that by criticizing Trump you're criticizing the army or the navy, the air force, I get upset because you know. Or that, I went on that amazing march. You guys go on Saturday. It was no, we were so inspired. We were the in teenagers, Vegas. man. They're, mm -hmm. 
ruling the world. They will, thank God, their votes will count. But they're so inspiring and brilliant. Even if gun control is messy and difficult and, and pragmatically it'd be hard to pass the legislation, you can't knock the fact that they watched a bunch of their friends slaughtered and they'd like there to be as little chance of it happening again. They're, they're taking you action. But they're the, involved. I, you know? So you tweet, you know, I, I Instagram will tweet, these are fantastic kids. They're so inspiring. They're getting out, you know, they're getting up and drawing signs and marching because they care. They want to get involved in the political process. And you got a bunch of people going, look like fucking commies to me. <laughs> and you go, really? <laughs> so Honestly? Actually, you thought you were doing the something The First nice. Amendment doesn't mean anything to you? <laughs> what? It's unbelievable. Oh, man. Yeah. So again, you're going to get backlash no matter what. I yeah. get a ton of yeah, so it's of course. But then, you know, sometimes you click on someone that writes some terrible shit to you and you realize their feed is, you're just one of a hundred people they shit on that day. Yeah, yeah. Right, so you're like, right, oh, they right. just, you know, what are you And also do? they're thrilled. So there was one person, I, I don't know why, occasionally in the middle of the night I just start slapping a troll and I, and they write back and it can continue. They're th but what you realize, I mean, if, you know, they're sitting in their bed surrounded by used Kleenex because you wrote back to them like, oh my oh, God. Yeah. Right, right. So and then yeah. one guy eventually apologized. I went, we being such a dick for you. You have no idea what you're talking no, about. No, we need to do it's more of though, Jason. And then he came out and he went, I'm really sorry. You're a really nice guy. You're right. I hadn't oh. thought about it carefully. I'm like, one in a million. That's all, the, that's all they want yeah. is your attention and, and, and for you to acknowledge them. Yeah. You've got to focus mm -hmm. more on the 98% of the people that like your movie. Uh, you no, know, no, not, not the 2% that thinks. Yeah. Do you know who doesn't like our movie? Yeah, who, who doesn't Can I like tell you it? who doesn't like Death of yeah. Stalin? The Kremlin. So <laughs> it came out. And it was given a license to uh, open in Russia, and Amano went depressed, and it got amazingly got standing ovations from the journalists, which is pretty rare. And then the day before it was due to be broke, uh, shown in cinemas, that some lowly guy in the culture ministry suddenly shit himself and thought, what, what if Putin finds out I've let this thing go by? So he revoked its license and banned it, and one cinema went ahead and showed it because they couldn't quite believe it. And the cinema raided it and shut it down. And what the, sorry, the police raided it. And what it did, of course, is make us the most popular underground film in Russia. Everybody's watching it. Oh, yeah, that was probably everybody, like a total hype about it. Yeah. There's an amazing tweet of a guy standing in Red Square under Putin's office watching it on a laptop. Isn't that crazy? What if it becomes a big thing there and you're like super famous in Russia now? I won't be going to Russia for a while because in the criticism, right, they it? said it's a disgrace, a disgraceful, disgusting. Wow. But in particular, the portrayal of Marshal Zhukov is an insult to a great war hero. And I, like a typical actor, I thought, oh, that's nice. I got mentioned in the review. And then I thought, oh, no, that's actually really bad. Yeah. <laughs> the Kremlin have singled me out. You know what? I totally forgot a couple years ago, the the, the Franco Rogan movie about Kim Jong Un. Yeah, the oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot that, that they almost, great. they tried to pull that movie at some point. Yes, I totally forgot. Well, you they, know what? They that released became, it online. And they made it that's even more Stormy popular. Daniels world. A yeah. really dumb comedy almost brought about nuclear war. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and a stripper might bring down the president. There you go. Isn't it Unbelievable. crazy when you think that? And then I, I remember at one point, uh, Dennis Rodman, the NBA player, uh, they said he may be the one to fix all this. And I'm, like, right. and I'm like, he's going to be the one that... Yes, the, UN, uh, the uh, U.S. ambassador to North Korea. That's Dennis hysterical. Rodman. If he can get through the metal detectors, of course. He was a fan of... of uh, Kim Rodman Jong. or something. <laughs> they were yeah, friends yeah. somehow, yeah, yeah. some way. All right. Well, Jason, man, thank you so much for stopping by. We that's appreciate it. You know, congratulations on the movie and all the great reviews and everything. So uh, that's big. That's the fun. death of Stalin, ninety-eight percent on uh, rotten, rotten. We always say rotten potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> rotten tomatoes. <laughs> and uh, looking forward to it. Look, the trailer looks great. You can Go. hit him up at Jason's Folly or on Instagram, the real Jason Isaacs. March 9th is when the movie's out. The, By the way, death of Stalin. Not the real Jason Isaac. Single because some fucker is trying to get fans to pay them money for things. Right. Pretending to be me. Right. I've had him killed. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you, Jason, for being here. More Kavino on Riches next.